I'm pretty sure Mama's gonna have questions. Y'all stick around. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Clint. It's been a while since we've done a video, and I figured it was about time I let you guys know why. We had a really good friend of ours pass away this spring, and uh, just hasn't been the same and really haven't felt like wheeling. Been throwing everything that we've been trying to do to grunt. There just hasn't been any time to do anything. So that being said, let's just get right after it and tell you what we've been up to. As you can see, the garage is a mess. We've got boxes and parts and stuff everywhere. There's just no way to get around it. That's been one of our biggest problems is getting damn parts. Slowly but surely, they're coming in though. So let's get after the meat of it. Em's had this Jeep about three years. She really took her time deciding which way she wanted to go with it. We think it had a two inch spring lift and a two inch body lift on it when we bought it. It was running 35s and it did okay. It actually drove really well. But after three years, she finally gave me the green light to go ahead and build it. So first things first, Grunt is getting new axles front and rear. JK Dana 44s. I'm getting rid of that piece of shit Dana 35 out of the rear and that oh weak Dana 30 in the front. The entire front axle is brand new. Housing, everything. It's going to have 488 gears in it, ARB air locker, new one ton JK crossover steering, and brand new disc brakes. The rear is a JK Dana 44 out of a sport model that a friend of mine had, and he pretty much just gave it to us. Triangulated long arm four link in the rear, three link long arm in the front. Getting a tummy tuck with the Barnes transmission skid. We got a TerraFlex super short slip yoke eliminator. Now I know y'all can't see this real well, but this is a Novak Conversions cable shifter for the transfer case. That gets rid of that jacked up linkage that was in here. In addition to the TerraFlex super short slip yoke eliminator, you also got a two low kit in there. If y'all don't know what a two low kit is, it basically gives you low range in two wheel drive. It's real easy to do. If you're gonna be in there putting a slip yoke eliminator on anyway, you may as well go ahead and put the two low kit in. The way it works is when you look down at your transfer shifter, you've got two high, four high, neutral, four low, and then what this kit allows you to do is bring it up one more notch and it gives you too low. The reason we decided to do that is it's kind of hard, as we all know, if you've got larger tires to turn your wheels when you're in four low. And when we're all done, Grunt's going to be sitting on these 37 inch MTRs. We initially wanted to do the Barnes four link rear, three link front. The whole thing just comes as a kit, but they were having so many parts issues. We've been waiting for that kit to come back in stock to like April, and they're still missing parts for it. So we ended up having to outsource and go to different places to get everything we needed. We custom built the control arms. We ordered all the joints from Curry Rock Jock. So she's going to have Johnny joints on all the control arms and the front track bar. Now, since we triangulated the rear, we don't need a rear track bar. Another good thing about the JK rear axles, we get rid of the TJ drum brakes in the rear. She's got disc brakes on the rear now too. Both axles are fitted with 488 gears, chrome molly axle shafts, and ARB air lockers. Why'd you go with air lockers? Well, that's kind of a good question. So for any of you that follow along with me on Facebook, I'm not on Instagram, I'm not on TikTok, I'm not on Twitter, I don't do any of that crap, I'm too old for that shit, and basically I really don't like Facebook either, but anyhow. If you want to go ahead and follow me on Facebook, I'm at Napalm Jeep. Mark Cox Zuckerberg and all his fact-checking Nazis kicked me off Facebook about almost a year ago. I just went ahead and took a break. I was permanently banned, and I really had no intention of ever getting back on any type of social media at all. But I got friends and stuff who were on Facebook, and it's nice to keep in touch and see what everybody's up to. But anyway... I've been posting stuff here and there on the Facebook page. And what we were doing was, I was looking for a set of JK Dana 44 pull-offs. Preferably out of a Rubicon, because they'd already have the e-lockers in them. I couldn't find them. Found one set, they were somewhere down in Georgia, and they were way overpriced. Well, my buddy had this Dana 44 out of a JK, 
planned on building it anyway. He had that. I couldn't find a JK Dana 44 front anywhere. Mama gave the go ahead to order a brand new axle from East Coast Gear Supply. So that's what we did. At the start of this build, we wanted e-lockers. But for some reason, East Coast Gear Supply was having a hard time getting e-lockers in stock. We could have had these axles probably two months earlier if they could have gotten the e-lockers in stock. Kept putting it off, kept putting it off, kept putting it off. Finally, our guy at East Coast Gear Supply, he was like, look, I don't know when, if or when we're going to get these e-lockers. They keep putting us saying we're two weeks out, we're two weeks out, we're two weeks out. They've been saying that for two months. And I was like, you know, I can order the e-lockers from Northridge or Morris. I can get the e-lockers. And East Coast was like, yeah, you could do that. But if you do that and bring us those lockers, we're not going to warranty the axle. And I kind of get it. So I'm not going to fuss about that a whole lot. Since they had the ARB stuff in stock and it was available, we decided to go that route. Now, I'm not happy about having to run plumbing and all that crap and mount an air compressor because there's really not a great place to mount an air compressor on a TJ. But she's going to have her own onboard air. She's going to be able to air up, air down on her own operator lockers and all that crap as long as I don't screw up the wiring and the plumbing. So there is a silver lining to it. And since we went ahead and did the air lockers and East Coast built the front axle, we've got a 10-year warranty on that axle. And for you folks that don't know anything about East Coast Gear Supply, if they warranty it, they will honor it. They have the best warranty follow-through I've ever seen. So as far as the rear axle goes, we had the axle. I had to cut off all the JK brackets. I ordered the Barnes JK to TJ rear axle swap kit. Came with the truss, brackets, everything you need. So I just had to weld those on. We were going to build the rear axle ourselves, but an air locker is a little bit different than an e-locker. Takes some different tools and some of the specs are a little bit different and I was not comfortable with that. And my buddy that's helping me, he didn't have the tools either. So we decided, well, we got everything else. The rear axle's ready to go. Let's just go ahead and take it up the East Coast and let them handle it. They put the gears in, the axle shafts, the brakes on, and the air locker. So since they did all that, we got a three-year warranty on the rear axle. We've also got the Barnes engine skid and the Rock Jock anti-rock front sway bar. We've got a lot of work done on Grunt, but there's still a lot more to go. Throw into that, we're building a shop and our son's getting married next month. Time is limited. When we first planned out this build, we were like, man, I'm going to have tons of content. I'm going to have videos for the whole friggin' summer. Well, when we started working on it, figured out it it was just way too difficult to try to do all this work and video at the same time because 90 percent of the time it's just me I don't have any help but the help that I have had my buddy Brian Harold has come over and really given me some great expert advice he's he's an expert on TJ geometry pretty much all Jeep geometry but TJ's in particular He's almost, I call him the TJ Whisperer. He just knows all the dimensions, the lengths that the control arm should be, all that stuff. And he helped out with a lot of the welding. It's a good deal when you have friends that know more than you do. And poor old Napalm has been neglected this summer. I haven't done anything with her. Haven't wheeled her since April. She's pretty much just been sitting in the driveway looking pretty. But once we're done with Grunt and the shop's built, I have some plans for Napalm. One of the things I will be videoing for this grunt build is the Anti-Rock front sway bar install. That's going to be one of the last things. Grunt will be on all four wheels when that happens. It'll be a lot easier to do. I can set the camera up and really not have to have anybody hold it and all that kind of stuff. As most of y'all know, I'm not on YouTube to make money. I'm here because I like to do it and hopefully bring y'all some good content and some good information that you may or may not know. Hope you guys liked the video. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. Till the next time, keep the shiny side up. Jeep on.